Hi, we are moving on to chapter 10.2 and yes, I know we haven't covered the electrical field in 10.1 yet but that's okay, we'll come back to that later on. So we'll continue with gravitation in 10.2 and now we are going to do the hardest thing in chapter 10. It is called the most difficult part in chapter 10 because in the past, the IB physics student performed the worst in this concept. And the concept that we're going to learn is kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy in an orbital motion. And there are two reasons to support why this is hard. And the first one you can see here, the equation that we're going to derive is not going to be on the data booklet, none of them. Is going to be on the data bullet. Reason number two. Later on, when we try to do some examples, you'll find out the relationship between these three things are not quite intuitive. And so that's why uh, it takes some efforts to actually understand through the equation and connect that with the actual physics. With that further ado, let's start to derive it because this is very fun. Let me give you the equation first. All right, these are the three equations about kinetic energy, potential energy, and the total energy. The thing that I want you to do now first is to copy these three equations into your personal data booklet. Do it now. So I hope you have done it already and now let's start to derive it. Let me give you a context. So it's actually quite obvious. Uh, talking about an orbital motion, so you should have a planet with the mass big M and the mass that is orbiting. And of course, I mean, those all these energy, these three energies is referring to the energy of these small mass, small m. Okay, and so the distance between the two objects would be out okay so now go and try to think about how we can derive these three equations pause the video and challenge yourself two thousand years later all right so let me show you how we can do it first of all for potential energy this is in fact already done because we have done it in the previous video uh, using the integration in calculus so in case you don't remember it you can go back and check out that video. Next, if you try to look at the idea between kinetic energy and potential energy, and if you add them together, you will be able to obtain the expression for total energy, right? I mean, if you look at uh, the expression itself, they all look very, very similar. Uh, this is big G M M over L, and this one is negative G M M over L, and for total energy is negative g m m over r over 2 r of course but then if you try to just put aside all these coefficients then you can kind of see this as 1 over 2 this one is negative 1 and the total energy will be like negative 1 over 2 so if you just try to add 1 over 2 with negative 1 then you simply get negative 1 over 2 so that means if you can obtain the expression for kinetic energy, the whole equation would just be done for total energy because by definition, um, these are the two energies that you have. Okay, so you can write down total energy will equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. So once you get the kinetic energy done, then you can get the total energy done. All right, so the only question now would be how do we derive the kinetic energy expression? Um, well, since we are talking about orbital motion, so obviously you need to think about more fundamental physics equation, and that is what we learned about circular motion and gravitational force. So once again, let's start with F equals to MA for the circular motion of this orbital motion. Uh, the force that we have could be uh, the gravitational force, of course. So big G, big M, small m over L square equals to the small m because this is referring to the small mass that is orbiting. And A, we can use V square over L. So if you try to simplify this, uh, we could 
take away the R on this side and only leaving you with one R and then we can take away the small m and therefore V square equals to big G M over R then you probably get stuck here uh, the only thing that you need to recall is simply the basic definition well there's no advanced definition I mean just simply definition of kinetic energy so in general we'll call it half mv squared that's basically what you learn and in this case actually it's not definition we derive it right we, it was derived this equation is not definition sorry about that it is derived from the work done equation work done is being defined and then we can derive this kinetic energy so now we are just applying it so if you just compare this then obviously what you have to do is to multiply like kind of brutal way to do multiply 1 over 2 m on both sides so 1 over 2 well maybe i don't write here 1 over 2 m v square equals to 1 over 2 small m with the big g big m r and so that means this should be the kinetic energy of these uh, orbiting object and if you try to look at this this is exactly the expression that we want all right, it's exactly the same. So we are done now. So in the next video, we'll try to do some exercise. But for now, I think one thing you should learn other than just deriving it, one thing you should learn is no matter where the orbiting object is, no matter what orbital altitude, that means what R you have, the relationship of kinetic potential and total energy will have a ratio of this once again. 1 over 2, negative 1, and negative 1 over 2. The ratio is always maintained the same. If you can remember and understand this, then the whole concept wouldn't be hard for you at all later on when we try to do other questions. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye!